So yes, it's the short answer here. I have already tested the lowest end M1 MacBook Air and it can handle a lot more than you think. Music production, light video editing, it works just fine. Office tasks, of course. Naturally, something faster like the M4 that Apple just released would have the same answer here. If you want to see the video where I test the M1 in Logic Pro and I think I Ableton Live, it's up here or you can find it on my channel. For us who are a little nerdy, we want to know more about the actual M4 CPU specifications, how many performance cores does it have, because performance cores affects how many plugins and VSTs and tracks you can have in your projects. I know it's pretty boring to listen to, but it is what will directly affect your max performance in terms of these types of tasks. And with the M4 Pro, there's actually some positive changes, which I will get to pretty soon in this video. The Mac Mini comes with M4 or the M4 Pro. So the entry level M4 on the Mac mini comes with four P cores and six E cores. So that's two more efficiency cores on the entry level Mac mini. But again, efficiency cores does not really do anything in terms of running plugins and audio software. I think it might help out with offloading some system resources, perhaps. It needs to be tested to see if they have any real world effect in performance. The M4 Pro comes in two versions, one with eight P cores and four E cores and one with 10 P cores and four E cores. And I think this is a really good move by Apple because the M3 Pro only had six P cores and that's pretty strange for a pro level CPU. So it's nice to see that you can get some performance options now in the mid kind of mid range tier that will directly affect the music production without you having to pay an insane amount of money to go for the M4 Max variant because that's what you had to do when you got the M3 CPUs. If you wanted more performance cores, you had to go for the M3 Max, and now you don't have to do that because the M4 Pro gets up to 10 performance cores. We actually already have some Geekbench tests with the M4 Pro 10 uh, P-Core variant. It gets around 22,000 in multi-core score, beating the M3 Pro and the even the M3 Max actually. But the single core speed on the M3 seems to be higher. Again, this is something that looks interesting, but it needs to be tested more than of course just Geekbench. It's just nice to see some numbers. In the M4 lineup of CPUs, we also have the M4 Max, where the high end option have 12 performance cores and four E cores. It's only available on the MacBook Pro for the time being, and I would assume that if you're looking for a desktop with a M4 Max, you have to wait for the Mac Studio at a later date. Rumored that it will be released in 2025. With also perhaps uh, we would assume that it will also get an M4 Ultra. You won't get the M4 Max in the Mac Mini, unfortunately, but you will be able to select the M4 Pro. Another thing Apple has done now is to increase the base amount of memory from 8 gigs to 16 gigs in all their lineup, actually. So, uh, <laughs> welcome after Apple, good choice. If you want to see a uh, spreadsheet where I list the different Apple M CPU types with how many performance cores it has, how many efficiency cores it has, I have a link to that spreadsheet below that will hopefully make it easier for you if you are in a uh, buying process. The easy way to see what how many cores you have if you go on the Apple website, you see uh, all of the options and you see it has listed GPU cores. So if you go to my spreadsheet, you see GPU cores and you align that with GPU cores on the Apple website, you will see how many performance and efficiency cores it has. I get a lot of comments on my videos asking if that or that CPU is good for music production and I'm sure this video will also probably get a lot of questions and other videos on my channel also get questions like this. I just want to know that I read every comment. I try to answer every question, but sometimes it's very difficult for me to kind of uh, answer all of them. Uh, it's due to time constraints and occasionally I just don't have a uh, good answer from the way the questions are framed. Uh, so I have to skip some of them. I'm not trying to be <laughs> rude or anything, but it's just the, how the way it is. I want to give you some of my initial buying suggestions in terms of mainly music production, but uh, also based on how the M4 CPU lineup looks like right now. Now, these are my personal opinions and I will have some affiliate links in the description below as well to these products. 
First, let's talk about the laptops. If you are on a tight budget, the MacBook Air is really a no-brainer. It's able to handle fairly complex projects based on my M1 test. So if you go for the M2 MacBook Air or the M3, it's up to you and your budget. The M3 is a little bit faster and it now comes default with 16 gigabytes for the same price. And it's actually uh, one of the ones I use. And uh, yeah, I don't use it much for music production though. I use it for other stuff, but it's a, a really nice MacBook and uh, it can do a lot of stuff. With the 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro, the sweet spot in terms of price to performance ratio, I would suggest the M4 Pro with 8P cores and 4E cores. This will give you 24 gigs of memory and 512 storage. If you want to go up to one terabyte of internal storage, I would jump on the 10P core variant, which also gives you two more performance cores, which will be a, a real solid long-term choice in my opinion. The highest end MacBook Pro will give you the M4 Max with 12P cores, but for a significantly higher price, at least where I live. I am a bit skeptical if it's really worth it for most people, but if you have money to burn and if you really need the GPU cores you get in addition here, be my guest. So let's talk a little bit about the Mac desktops. The Mac mini got a new redesign. It's smaller and it also come with the M4 and the M4 Pro CPU. The Mac mini does not have the M4 Max. So if you're on a really tight budget, I would go for the entry level Mac mini with four P cores and six E cores with 16 gigs of memory. The entry level Mac mini only has 256 gigs of internal storage. And that's a bit low in my opinion. Of course, it depends on what you do. If you just use it as a surfing device, it's just fine. But you can pay Apple to upgrade the storage. It's expensive, but what I would do is get an external SSD and you can use that instead because that would be a lot cheaper than upgrading the storage from Apple. And you can get really fast Thunderbolt SSDs today, which almost match the speed of the internal drive. Not, not that high but it's kind of it, it gets there and uh, I think it's uh, easier to have an external SSD on a uh, desktop compared to a uh, laptop for example uh, a laptop you move around a lot you perhaps you just want to upgrade the internal storage there because you are traveling with it and you don't want a dongle but a Mac mini you can just have it attached on the back or on the front or and or something like that I think the sweet spot of uh, Mac Mini in terms of performance is the M4 Pro with 8P cores and 4E cores and the variant with 24 gigabytes of memory. And of course you can go to 10P cores uh, if you want, but you have to pay a bit more. Now, if you want the M4 Max in a desktop, it's not available yet. This would uh, be something for the Mac Studio here, but uh, Apple have yet to come with updates to the Mac Studio. I would not back buy the Mac Studio today or the Mac Pro, but instead wait for it to get the M4 CPU option. We can also assume that the M4 Ultra will come sometime in 2025. So that's two M4 Max CPUs stitched together. So probably, uh, 24 cores or something like that. So the performance here on the uh, upcoming Mac Studio will probably be <laughs> mind-blowing when it comes out. iMac also got updated, uh, only the M4 here, not the M4 Pro. Now, am I going to test the M4 Mac Mini or the MacBook Pro on this channel? Uh, Probably not, and that's because I have to buy the products I'm testing and you know the prices of them. But of course you can help out sharing the video, subscribing, buying your new Mac through my affiliate links uh, under the video here and all of that stuff. I'm kind of a performance guy, so I am waiting to see what Apple does with the Mac Studio. That's something that I'm a little interested in. I have never tested the Mac Studio and it would be cool to try it out, but I want to test it with the M4 Ultra if I am able to get it somehow when it comes out. When I do most of my music production, it is here on my desktop. So I don't think uh, I should get the uh, laptop because uh, I don't want the battery degradation and you know all of that stuff that comes with a laptop if I'm only going to use it as a desktop uh, replacement. So that's why I have the uh, <coughs> MacBook Air M3 now. 
and uh, the uh, my PC as a uh, music production uh, uh, computer at the moment, at least. I don't think this M4 Mac update from Apple is uh, insane. It's a mid-life cycle update. If you already have the M2, the M3, or maybe even the M1, you might not need to upgrade here. What I think is really good now with this update is that Apple have increased the P cores on the M4 Pro so that you don't have to go for the M4 Max to get more performance cores. You can potentially save a lot of money here because the M4 Max variant of the MacBook Pro is actually really expensive. And the thing that they have actually finally ditched 8 gigabytes of memory and increased it to 16 gigabytes. Well, it took a long time, but uh, good on Apple. The M4 Pro also now comes with Thunderbolt 5 so that you can connect displays with higher resolution. M4, M4 Pro supports up to two displays. M4 Max, you can connect up to four displays with higher resolutions. Specifications of that you will probably find somewhere. You can also order the MacBook Pro with nano coated displays. You have to pay extra for it, of course, but you get an Apple certified polishing cloth so you don't damage your display using unacceptable non-certified Apple cleaning products. You don't dare do that. I hope this makes it easier for you to get your next Mac and thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.